So let's go back to defense attorney Midwin Charles to talk about so much that is going on um, in this case. Midwin, okay, George Zimmerman's attorney says those texts are important to their case, that pictures of Trayvon are important to their case. What are the chances that a jury, the public's already seen them, that a jury will be allowed to see them? I think that they're slim um, to none. Uh, these text messages and photographs would probably never come in as evidence because they are irrelevant. Usually when evidence is proposed to come into a particular trial, the court does what's called a balancing test. They look to see whether or not the evidence is probative. Does it have any value that's going to assist the jury with coming up with a decision? And these text messages and photographs, all they do is prejudice the defendant. I mean, not the defendant, but they just prejudice the victim, rather. And that's part of the balancing test. They look to see whether this evidence is overly prejudicial. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't doesn't show anything. All it does is play on the racial fears that actually led George Zimmerman to get out of his car that day and stalk Trayvon Martin. Let me ask you this with your defense attorney hat on. Let me ask mm -hmm. you this. Um, is it possible that the defense knows there's a very slim chance this will actually get in at trial, but if they get it out in the public, they're somehow tainting a potential jury pool? Is that a tactic on their part? Of course it is. That's exactly what they're doing. They know this isn't going to come in to evidence. Any attorney that, that has any little bit of training knows that this isn't coming into evidence. What they're trying to do is affect the jury pool and try to see if they can kind of get at people to kind of formulate an opinion about Trayvon Martin as a teenager so that they can decide for themselves that George Zimmerman was justified in what happened because Trayvon somehow is a teen who smokes marijuana and throws up, you know, the middle finger and photographs or what have you. But Rochelle, you show me a teenager in America today that doesn't do those things. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, is this is this where we're going? We're going to say now that every teen that plays with marijuana or or has particular images on Facebook or social media should be killed? Is that where we're going with this? That that's what makes it so ridiculous. It is a very provocative uh, tactic, uh, for sure. Let's talk about their attempt to get a continuance, to get a delay. Um, do you think that'll be granted? I don't know that it'll be granted. I know they tried to do this before and the judge denied it. Listen, they've had so much time to prepare they, their case. They've had more than a year. Uh, there's been all kinds of discovery and his defense team is pretty um, experienced. So they know how to work these kind of cases. They know the type of labor and manpower that is required to get your ducks in a row. So I, I can't see the judge granting this decision. You know, when I think about this trial and I think about so many of the issues that we even just touched on in this conversation here that we get on social media this trial is going to require the best of us as a society don't you think it is. It's going to uh, require people to not pass judgment. It's going to require people to kind of sit back and wait and listen to the evidence mm -hmm. because there's evidence that a lot of us haven't heard yet, too. Mm -hmm. And people aren't kind of factoring that in. We've all heard that 911 tape when George Zimmerman called and was told, you know, do not proceed. But I'm sure that there there's other pieces of evidence that hasn't yet come to light. So people just need to be patient and listen to all the evidence as it comes out. Absolutely. Midwin, thank Thank you so much. And we're going to have uh, people, viewers calling in. Welcome back. Now time for your calls, your questions about the uh, George Zimmerman trial. Of course, he is on trial in the shooting death of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. The trial is rather just a few days away, but uh, it seems like the country is ready, Midwin. There's so many questions, so many comments coming in. So Midwin Charles is going to help me uh, field your questions and calls. Midwin, let's go ahead and get started. Our first caller is uh, April. April is calling from Texas. April, um, I have a note here about your question, but I'm going to let you ask the question. Um, well, it's more of a comment than it is a question. Okay. Um, my comment is, see, I lived in Florida when that tragedy happened, and I heard it on the news as soon as it happened. I heard, you know, and I've seen um, Todd Bay, uh, or uh, excuse me, I've seen that boy at the store getting his Skittles in his milk. Now, on his way home, okay, if he was going to a gunfight, you, you wouldn't have Skittles in one hand and something to drink in the other. Now, I have four sons, and they range from 23 to 10. My three older ones are 21, 24, and 27, and they wear, they wear these, um, these hoodies. It would, I would be absolutely outraged. It would be, a tr I couldn't even imagine if this would happen to my son. I feel for the Martin family. I mean, this is, 
I just can't even feel the emotions that I'm having about this boy when I was right there in Florida when it happened. Well, and, and, and the note that I have from, from uh, my producer says that you just think that it, it would be meaningless to have a gag order on this because you, you're basically saying everybody knows about it already. Is that your point? Exactly, yes. Okay. A gag order, I could not believe when I heard that on TV. Okay. Or well, what? Well, let me bring Midwin into this, Midwin, because actually tomorrow at the hearing, the prosecution is again going to try to get a gag order imposed. Do you think that has a chance? And to April's point, so many people are passionate about this, already know about it on one side or the other. Well, what I find most interesting is that they want a gag order for this trial, but yet they want to leak evidence and all kinds of things when it's convenient and helpful to them. I don't know that this gag order uh, request is going to be successful. I think that the state of Florida has an interest in making this public, mm -hmm. particularly since it, it involves a very controversial law, Stand Your Ground, which I think a lot of people are now second guessing, not just in the state of Florida, but in other states in this country that has a similar law as well. Because as the caller said, how can it be that an innocent teenager who just is going to buy Arizona iced tea and Skittles can all of a sudden now not just be the victim, but also be categorized or characterized rather as a pariah based on activities that he's done that has absolutely nothing to do with what happened to him. Um, so now everything he has ever done in his life is now under scrutiny. Why? Because he was just minding his own business, buying Arizona iced tea and Skittles. So I think the state of Florida has a, 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 a a compelling interest to kind of showcase this case and let people listen to the facts and the evidence. Okay, um, and now uh, let's go to uh, Nebraska. Colette is holding from Nebraska. Colette, what's your question or comment? Um, my question is, I don't understand why he's not in jail. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about that, Midland, because I think so many times people don't understand why some people are granted bail while some people uh, are, aren't. The process is not supposed to be punitive. Explain to us how this works. Yeah, absolutely. Bail is often granted in cases where uh, the defendant is not deemed to be a flight risk. And the judge uh, goes through an ana analysis with evidence that's presented and said, listen, says, listen, this person is only charged with a crime. Remember, it he is innocent until proven guilty. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of people find that a little bit confusing because we do have an innocent, dead 17 year old kid. But he is still a part of the criminal justice system. We have a criminal justice system that says you are innocent until proven guilty. So that's why he's on bail. Okay, Midwin, thank you very much and appreciate all of our viewers who call in about this as well.